So they are right packaged with my new chemicals from photo impacts. So let's quickly unpack my order and check if I have everything I need. So the first thing what I have in the back is kit for array for chemistry. This one a little bit different, so it's array four pre-mixed, so it's only two bottles. And I also bought these two solutions. One of them is a paper developer, and the second one is a stop bath. Because stop bath it's more or less universal, it's really good to have it in your storage. So the next item I actually bought the black and white paper for my experiments with the black and white printing. And I want to start from something cheap and something easy to print. So it's RC paper from FOMA with a constant contrast. And I bought the bigger size and the standard postcard size. It should be enough. I'm not really planning to print anything bigger than the small size. As you probably understand, I care more about the color photography and color printing. And this is my new fresh kit from Tetanal for ColorTech C41 Chemistry. And to make my life easier, I bought small measuring cylinder. So let's unpack in larger. And today I want to rearrange a little bit of my stock and paper. And I'm actually running out from the storage space on my small little cart. This is why I will probably use this small paper holder for current paper what I'm using in the print. Because it's just saving a lot of time and space on my cart and the rest of the things I can put in my drawer and pick it up later. So my standard process is actually using only two chemicals. It's a developer and Blixfix. But if I want to use three or more chemicals, it's much handier to use this bigger crate for water and install circulator inside. I use it mostly for C41 chemistry and C41 development. And because I want to use bigger amount of bottles, I need a bigger space and also it's more water, so it means it will be more temperature stable. I'm still quite seriously thinking about the Yobo development system because this amount of bottles, case and everything disassembled and especially this horrible cine steel circulator just killing me every day. So I will try to first of all clean it up because the rotation part of this circulator always gets some dirt and dust and it's not really circulating anymore properly. And secondly, I will try to disassemble this thing and unfortunately it's not really going to happen because it's a one-time use device. Yes, probably you can disassemble it completely, but unfortunately it's not serviceable and you have a plastic clips and much probably you will broke them if you just disassemble it once. So my advice, never buy this tool, just buy Chinese circulator for like 50 euros. It will be much better quality and it will probably have a better screen and even connection to the phone. And additionally, you cannot turn off the screen on this tool, so this is not really darkroom compliant. So for now, I have a problem with the amount of different chemicals. So I have a two additional empty bottles and one of it I will use for stop bath and second one I will just put this at the flow. So basically my last step of uh, film washing will be with the DI water and with the add flow. As I said before, at the moment I can use even black and white paper, but for array for chemistry I need this at a stop to create the stop bath after development bath. Usually it's quite easy to make the solutions, but for me still it's a mystery why you need like for example 20 milliliters of this solution and it's not written to 100 milliliters to easily recalculate for 20 to 200 or whatever number you want. All the solutions I made with the distilled water, you can easily buy it in the supermarket. So I have already two solutions and in the middle of the development and the Blix fix, I will use small rotation with the stop bath. After it, I will rinse it with water and finish up with this solution, which is at a flow solution. So it's quite easy to prepare, it really should be not crazy precise, uh, it should just not create the residue on top of the paper or film. It's not crazy important, but I just want to wash out the prints with the clean water after all. For intermediate washes I will use this 
jug with the tap water. It should be sufficient to clean up all the chemistry before I make a final wash. In principle idea of my darkroom, I don't really need the full supply of the water. I just have it because I'm in the bathroom, but in principle you just need a jug with a, like 5 liters of DI water and one waste container which you will recycle. So let's start with the negative. I have for today additional negative from my trip to Venice, Italy and it's much easier to print because I want to make more experiments with the paper and with the development. For this purpose it's much easier to take a film which you actually confident it will be good to print and the settings will be spot on. As always I clean up my carrier mask and I have this special tissue for glass cleaning. And as I mentioned it in the previous videos, I am using this dry hair shampoo to remove all the problems with the Newton rings which in occur. And additionally, I'm using this anti-static gun, and especially for the film because I don't want to scrub it. So I just discharge it completely with the anti-static gun and blow away all the dust what I have on the surface. Really good reason why I have a glass mask and a glass holder in my enlarger, it's much easier to clean, so it means if I clean everything up and close it down, my negative stays clean forever. So for example, if I want to print it on the next day, I literally don't need to clean up anything and unload it and reload it and so on. So let's align the negative on my easel and check if we have a still focus in the same spot. So usually I don't need to change anything because I'm using the same magnification 17 on the scale on my larger and a 50 millimeter lens. So the next step is the calibration and as always for this particular negative strip it's much easier than the rest of my negatives especially if I develop it not myself and in the film lab. Only difference usually is the just density of the negative so it's just time what I need to expose and for this negative it's a 6 seconds. As you can see here, I modified my timer and I have more times for stop bath, for washing and for final rinse. So the first step of the process I put in a cup in my drum color developer and immediately start rotating and in the same time pressing the timer. I stopped pre-washing my paper because in principle it's not really good idea to dilute uh, your developer directly on the paper. Because in principle you have a limited time and your reaction anyway will be not to 100% of the couplers converted on the paper. It's much better to use this technique uh, with a dry paper and directly splash it with the developer. So the next step is a fix for 15 seconds and after fix we basically have a paper which no longer developing so it's precise cut off time so it doesn't really change your quality of the paper and the next step is a blix fix in principle blix fix goes to the end of the process so you can handle it longer but keep it in mind all the solutions what you're using they actually not neutral ph and if you handle your paper for long period of times and these solutions it's actually not really good for emulsion and for the paper and for the base material. So try to keep it up with the range of prescription on array 4 process and unfortunately with this hand method and using for like five six different types of steps it can be quite annoying for printing like for example small test strips so, for example, for test strips you can avoid half of the steps, but for final prints it's much better to use this finalized process. The print will be much cleaner, the colors can be better. And for this first test print I used the full size paper what I cut last time. Unfortunately this piece of paper I know it should be defective, so I used the full size. And as you can see on this picture the buildings itself looks a little bit cold and in reality it was a blue light and I don't really like this strong cast but technically the print is, looks good. As a next step I want to make a correction and remove this a little bit of cyanish blue tint from the shadows. So I will just remove the 10 points from yellow and 10 points from magenta. And the next print what I made also printed with the same paper and it probably will be a little bit defective because this is the next sheet of paper in the same roll. 
So I like the feel of this print much better. So let's quickly dry it and inspect if we need more corrections or it's already fine and I'm happy with the final print. I really like the warmth of the colors in the top side of the building and at the moment I don't have this bluish cast and it looks more neutral and more warm. I have only one defect on the left side which is bent on the paper but in the rest of the thing uh, the print itself looks really good. What I want to try, I want to try to remove the contrast from the print and I have this mist black filter, so I will put it in front of the lens and try to make exposure and check if I have any difference. So in reality the contrast and colors should be the same, but the micro contrast on the picture should be decreased. I'm not sure if it will be enough because it's only one eighth of the filter, so it probably will be nothing or we will see no difference. So let's quickly check the print and as you can see here I have finalized process and I not really wash the print after all. So I have only two wash steps in between of the final fix, but the rest of the solutions actually goes in the same bottles. So I can say it's kind of a semi-dry process and you just need a, a little bit of water supply to print and you don't need a, access to the running water. So first of all it's more ecologically friendly and secondly it's much easier to handle if you don't have access to the water in a dark room. But for now these two prints look more or less the same, so I have uh, no difference between the first filter and without the filter. So I really like this picture and it's glossy paper, which I also really like. So as always you can find my prints on my webshop. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.